Jehoash, also known as Joash, Joas or Joas, was a king of Judah, and the sole surviving son of Arazir after the massacre of the royal family ordered by his grandmother, Athaliah. He was also the first Judahite king to be descended from both the house of David and the house of Omri. Through his paternal grandmother and predecessor, Athaliah, his mother was Zibiah of Beersheba. Jehoash was seven years old when his reign began, and he reigned for forty years. He was succeeded by his son, Amaziah of Judah, William F. Albright has dated his reign to 837-800 BC, while E. R. Thilo offers the dates 835-796 BC. The Gospel of Matthew does not list Jehoash of Judah in the genealogy of Jesus, being one of four kings of Judah so omitted the other three being Araziah, Amaziah, and Jehoiakim. Early life While yet an infant, his paternal aunt Jehoshibai saved him from the general massacre of the family commanded by his paternal grandmother Athaliah, and he was apparently the only surviving male descendant of his grandfather Jehoram. His uncle, the priest Jehoiadar, brought him to public notice when he was seven years of age, and had Jehoash crowned an anointed king. Athaliah was taken by surprise when she heard the shout of the people, God save the king, and when she appeared in the temple to challenge this coup, Jehoiadar commanded her to be taken out of the temple to be put to death. After Jehoash was crowned, the covenant was renewed between God, the king, and the nation. And after having destroyed the altars of Baal and killed Matan, the priest of Baal, the king was conducted with great ceremony to the throne. Later life and death while Jehoiada lived, Jehoash favored the worship of God and observed the law, but after his death Jehoash was led into supporting other gods. Zechariah, Jehoiada's son and successor, boldly condemned this rebellion, but was put to death. The author of the Books of Chronicles attributes Jehoash's deeds to the oppression suffered at the hands of Aramea and invaders as God's judgment. When the Syrian king Hazel marched against Jerusalem, Jehoash tried to bribe him with the gold of the royal and sacred treasuries to turn back, but this proved fruitless for the Syrian army persisted to destroy all the princes of Judah and the soldiers, executed judgment against Jehoash, and they left him severely wounded. Jehoash was assassinated by his own servants at Milo, and his assassination is recorded as an act of revenge for the blood of Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada. Joash was buried together with his fathers in the city of David, although he was not in the sepulchres of the kings. In rabbinic literature, the extermination of the male descendants of David was considered a divine retribution for David's responsibility for the extermination of the priests by Saul, who had commanded his servant Dog to perform this task. Joash escaped death because in the latter case one priest, Abiathar, survived. The hiding place of Joash was, according to R. Eleazar, one of the chambers behind the Holy of Holies, according to R. Samuel B. Naaman, one of the upper chambers of the temple. Although a king who is the son of a king need not be anointed, exception was made in the case of Joash, as well as of Solomon and Zedekiah, the succession of each of whom was contested. Particular mention is made of the crown placed on Joash's head, because it fitted exactly, showing that he was qualified for kingship. He was assassinated by two of his servants, one of whom was the son of an Ammonite woman and the other the offspring of a Moabite, for God said, Let the descendants of the two ungrateful families chastise the ungrateful Joash. Ironically, Moab and Ammon were the two offspring of Lot's tryst with his two daughters as described in Gen. 1930-38, Jehoash Tablet. In 2001, an unprovenanced inscription was published, known as the Jehoash Inscription or Temple Inscription, which appears to be a record of repairs made to Solomon's temple during Jehoash's reign. The tablet consists of 15 lines of Hebrew text inscribed on a piece of tabular black stone. Following extensive scientific tests, the Israeli archaeological authorities declared it to be a forgery attempted but failed to prosecute the perpetrator. Today a number of experts maintain that it is not a forgery. 
Ancestry